Hi everybody, today I want to do a quick video on Cricut Design Space because as you know, this thing likes to change a lot. So I thought it's been a while since we sort of had a look around Design Space to get our heads around some of the newer features that Cricut has put into it. And I'm going to start right up at the top here where you can see there is a little button that says help. This is something new. You might notice that I'm in the beta version of Design Space. What the beta version means is you can see the new features that Cricut are rolling out kind of before everybody else but usually those features will be rolled out to the general population of um, design space users over time if you do want to be one of the first people to try them out then all you do is you click on the drop down menu by your name go into settings and then change under general your application experience to being beta and that way you will see the, you know the newest features first and get to play around with them I wanted to start with this help section because Cricut has amalgamated all of the different resources that are already available to give you help and tips on how to use your machines and they put it all into design space. So in the past, there would be stuff on YouTube and they've got the Cricut Help website. And some of you might have also used Cricut Learn, which was a dedicated website, which just had lots of how to's and videos and cheat sheets. But now you can access all of that stuff directly in design space. And I'm gonna take you straight to the how to videos because there is something particularly exciting I wanted to show you. Give it a second. Hi, my name is Rabia and in this video I'll Please. explain all about the Cricut mats and blades that you need when working with paper products. Yeah, so that is legit my face right there in Cricut Design Space. I did work with Cricut, I think it was a couple of years back now, to put together some videos for their Cricut Learn website all about crafting with paper. The website, they, they've kind of decided to shut that project down, but they've put all those videos here into Design Space. I think they have also put them on YouTube, but yeah, if you, you know, don't get enough of my face on my channel in YouTube, come and check me out in Design Space. Okay, I'm done talking about the thing that has made me the most excited in terms of recent updates. The other things within Cricut Help are cheat sheets, which I think actually are quite handy to have around. So if we just click onto one of these, these are the kind of things that you might want to just have a quick read through. Personally, I prefer to learn, you know, from videos. I find kind of reading things to be less helpful than watching somebody explain how to do something. But all the same, there are all the cheat sheets available. And the other things, the keyboard shortcuts are actually quite handy. This one you might want to save and as you're first starting to use them, refer to the cheat sheet, but eventually you'll probably just learn all these things. And they are quite intuitive. So group, you know, control G, you could probably have guessed that. Command G on, on an Apple device. Send backwards, control, and then this funny square arrow. You know, these are the same kind of commands you'd be using in other programs anyway. So they are intuitive, but nonetheless, this cheat sheet is something Cricut has put together for us to have them all in one place. And then the rest of it is not as interesting. So we won't really bother looking at that. I'm going to go over to the canvas and go into images because there is an update coming to images which is not showing up in my design space right now where if we were to search for something let's just say flower what it will do is up here at the top it will show you different categories that you might want to filter the images by here you can see it's going to have these sort of different categorizations i don't know once it's at rolled out we'll see what these different things look like and if they're actually handy filters to have put into images but yeah there you go there's a, a new feature that's coming what i did want to show you are some filters on the left hand side which there have always been filters there but there are some newer ones so i'm going to skip past general and image type operation type these have kind of been there since the dawn of time and the creators and brands that's also been there since before contributing artists is the more relatively new creator which hopefully as you know is other designers who have created artwork to go into design space so it's quite nice to use artwork from these people because you know it's not from like a big corporation like disney but rather from individual you know people who are able to do graphic design these three at the bottom i thought might be fun to look at sometimes when you are working on a project you know what you're trying to make let's say you are making a, a cake topper or you're going to be decorating some t-shirts or a cushion or something this set of filters lets you tell design space what it is you're thinking about making and then it will give you images that are relevant so let's say a stencil 
and you'll get a bunch of images which you could use as a stencil. You can imagine cutting this out of removable vinyl and then painting this image onto whatever it is you've put your stencil onto. The other filter that I think is quite handy is the one for mugs. I've only just recently unboxed my mug press as you might have seen on the channel. So if I clear the search, then you can see there are images that are specifically for applying onto mugs. Now this filter down here for material is also a newer one. I've been through these different images and I think probably some of them are not so useful. Like when you filter for crepe paper, even though there's no search term up here, there's like no results that come up. So I don't know why that's even there. But infusible ink, for example, actually does give you some good results. Cause I know when I was trying to design for a mug in a recent project, actually, it would have been quite handy to have all these different options. So how cute are these ones? But they're a bit pumpkin-y for me, but I love the colors that are being used here. One more filter that I want to show you is this very bottom one on language. And I'm really impressed by this because this is definitely a newer filter and it only makes sense now that there are the contributing artists. So for example, if I filter for Arabic, there are actually so many images, over a thousand, that are in Arabic. That's super cool. Like This definitely was not the case four or five years ago. And there are so many different language options. If you look here, let's see. Let's try Japanese. I mean, I won't pretend that I can recognize that this is definitely Japanese, but it's still really cool that there are actually results when you filter for the Japanese language. Oh, look, Urdu. My mom would be so thrilled to see this. <laughs> I actually have a cousin with this name. This is so cool. So yeah, I really like the fact that the images have been opened up enough that people are contributing different images and now we can search in all these different languages. So what I wanted to show you guys next was over on the homepage. If I click on discover, which is normally where you will land when you first open Design Space, you might have noticed that there is this section at the top called images for you and projects for you. I actually think it's worth every so often spending some time looking at what is showing up in here. What's happening is whenever you are designing in Design Space, the software is kind of remembering the stuff that you tend to use and you, you kind of show preference for and it shows you more of that kind of stuff i know it's like a tiny bit creepy but at the same time it legit works like this i'm actually going to bookmark it because i can see that i would probably really enjoy making something with this image because it's just so beautiful and the same thing with this one here in fact i've probably used this image before in a project because i just love geometric shapes islamic calligraphy islamic geometry that kind of thing so i'll bookmark that one as well projects for you is also something that i every so often have a look at because again it does show things that Cricut knows I've been searching for. I was working on a keychain project recently. Below the for you parts, then it's kind of just the standard stuff that you'd expect to see where they show you seasonally relevant projects. I'm not really a big pumpkin person, so, you know, I'm happy to skim past there. I do think new fonts is also one that we should browse every so often because you can bookmark fonts right from here. And as you know, the font library is massive. So if you see something in this new font section that you know you like the look of, this one, for example, I'm sure I would want to use that in the future. You can quickly bookmark it. Why have I bookmarked this? I must have used it before. Then when you're searching later on, you don't have to worry about not finding it again. Normally my advice to beginners for Cricut is just don't waste time on the homepage because it is a bit overwhelming, confusing. There's a lot going on here. But I do also think sometimes you kind of need a bit of suggestion and help when you're wanting to make something. The inspire section I've decided is actually quite cool for that. It seems to update itself quite quickly. I literally clicked on this five minutes before I started filming and it looked entirely different. So I think the stuff that I have just searched is kind of showing up uh, here near the top. But generally, if I were to scroll through this, then I will probably find a few projects. This one, for example, that I like the look of. How cute is this thing? Glitter house. That looks like somebody's put a lot of love and care into making this. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. But you can see there are things here that I would actually want to give a try. And if I'm ever a bit like, oh, I want to make something, but I don't know what, then this inspire section is 
a nice place to just kind of get a little bit of inspiration. I guess that's why they've called it Inspire, isn't it? So there's always new stuff coming into design space, but these are kind of the most recent things that I thought I'd just highlight for you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments if you do happen to come into the videos and watch my paper crafting video. I would honestly, that would make me so thrilled to know that some of you are watching my tutorial videos in design space. But if you don't fancy opening design space, then take a look at the playlist on your screen now of my most wanted craft tutorials. I will see you next time. Until then, happy crafting.